and are talking about just kind of programs needing to build in their first year as, as the rules allow and as they see fit. Obviously, Colorado has taken a similar approach as you guys did, maybe to a little bit more of an extreme extent uh, this offseason under, under Deion Sanders. Um, what's your take on kind of what they're doing up in Boulder? And even though you're only in a conference with them for one year, um, are you looking forward to, to going there and playing them at, at this September? Yeah, I mean, I haven't um, – obviously haven't played against them yet, but I, I give them credit. I mean – we all know what the rules are. We all know what the parameters are. And our job is to build the best teams um, that we can at the universities that give us the opportunities to do it. No excuses. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, there, there obviously needed to be a roster transformation there um, in, in Coach Sanders' uh, opinion. And they've gone about it aggressively. Um, obviously, the, the success of that, just like of ours or anybody else's, will be determined on the field in the fall as time goes on. But um, yeah, I mean, you can't you can't worry about what everybody else thinks, right? Like, that's not that's not our job as leaders. Our job as leaders is to do the best we can for the people that give us the opportunities. And so, yeah, from from the outside looking in, it looks like they've you know done a great job transforming that roster, bringing in some really good players. They've been creative and how they've done it, and I can do it. Do you feel like you guys have set the standard in terms of what a big roster turnover looks like in the offseason using the transfer portal and things like that? I, I'm not sure, honestly. I mean, I, I know I know people point to it um, when you have the win differential and, and, and just maybe the feel of the program you know, changing as, as quickly as it did. Um, wasn't our goal to change the way Brian right, to do it. It was just to try to make USC as good as we can. And so if it changes anything, then that's just a lot of fun. What can you say about the addition of Cliff Kingsbury and your staff? Okay, yeah, Cliff's been, been great. It's been good uh, to have him with us. He got there right after uh, spring ball ended. And so it's been great to have him here for the summer. And um, yeah, good friend, great coach, um, another great guy to have in the staff room uh, that brings, obviously, a lot of knowledge, not just from the offensive point of view, but been very helpful to, for me to have a guy that's sat in that, that chair in terms of being a head coach um, and both at the collegiate level and, and at the NFL level has been, has been awesome. And, you know, Cliff already knew so many of the guys on our staff that there, a lot of those relationships were, were already in place. So in terms of just, you know, kind of fitting in with the guys has been really seamless. Well, maybe drop some plays for you. Contributing some. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now you, have, you, you, you get a mind like that in that room, you We've got a creative room as it is, and yet a guy like that, we, we're certainly going to take advantage of it. How do you notice the recruiting change or has it changed regarding now that you're going to the Big Ten? Yeah, it's 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 an impact, right? Like, there's certainly an impact. Um, you, you kind of look at, I think, us recruiting, you know, branching out to some of the areas that we're recruiting, and I think that's going to continue to to evolve even more and more as we go on. Uh, I think. I think our kids are excited about playing on a monster stage week in and week out with some of the matchups that it's going to create. And I mean, listen, I mean, right now, more people watch Big Ten football than anything else. And you're getting ready to add, you know, two prime schools in the LA market into that. And what that's going to mean is, uh, is uh, some great opportunities for all the teams in the future. So, um, yeah, from a recruiting standpoint, that's that's the time that we focus the most on it. Um, it's certainly, I think, exciting for, for everybody, coaches, fans, and, and recruits, future players. I'm going to throw a media day softball. If you weren't a head coach in another world, what other job would you be doing? Um, all my family says either a lawyer or a doctor, but I, I don't know. Um, I think I could have done either one. Um, probably one of those two. Would it be a lawnmower like Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> yeah, that's a better answer. There's no telling with Jim. No tell. One coach you didn't get to play against last year was Jim. Yeah. Like Mighty Conference. Did you know a lot about him coming into the conference and start playing in this fall? Just kind of what are you looking forward to? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I knew about his, his previous success and the job he had done as a, as an offensive coach and play caller. And, and uh, I think all of us, when, when Washington hired him, I think our betting coaching community knew that that was a you know, really strong hire. And uh, I've enjoyed this year uh, just meetings and uh, we did the big uh, coaches uh, golf outing at Pebble Beach. You got to spend a lot of time with him there. It's uh, I've, I've just had a lot of fun getting to know him. Uh, a great guy, a lot of fun to talk to. It, We'll get to play him once this year, which will be fun, or maybe twice, right? We'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, 
Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's done a tremendous job. They got a lot of really good football players up there right now, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun to get to know him personally. Coach, you mentioned um, Colorado. Have you had any opportunity in the spring at all to interact with Coach Sanders? I know he's not here today, and just what do you think about the overall excitement he's brought to the league so far in the offseason? Yeah, no, I've never met Coach. Uh, looking forward to getting a chance to do it. Uh, we got a lot of mutual friends, so it'll be good to catch up with them. Yeah, I mean, listen, anytime you can bring in good players or good coaches into a league, uh, it's a healthy thing for the league. And in Colorado, Colorado's got some some really strong history, as we all know, and so I think it's a good for college football, good for this league right now uh, to see programs like that that have been down a little bit start to come back, and you certainly can't deny the excitement. When you look at the caliber of quarterbacks in this conference, do you think it's going to be every week one quarterback up, upping another quarterback with what they can do? Well, I, listen, I mean, it's one of those things, like, is, is all the quarterbacks coming back a big deal? Yeah, of course it is, right? Like, it, it, it's an important position, but there's still the other 21 guys on the field are going to have some say in it too, right? And, and so um, it's a great starting point for a lot of these teams, and it does give you absolute advantages. But, you know, even when returning all these quarterbacks, like a lot of these guys are going to have new supporting casts. You know, a lot of these guys are going to have different players around them, or in some cases different coaches or different play callers or different systems. So um, there will be new challenges for the quarterbacks. But, yeah, I mean, you certainly can't deny it. The strength of it, and, and I would imagine there'll be a, a lot of great performances throughout the year. What's really your impression of Deuce Robinson so far? Uh, Deuce has done well. He's done well. He's uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, the, the, the size, the length, the speed combination is is, is unique, like we kind of knew and, and thought thought it was, and uh, he's picked up on our, our system really quick, and, and uh, I'd certainly be surprised if he didn't have a, a, a good impact on the figured out where he's going to slot and then also the, the baseball schedule and how it's going to work. Yeah, we're going to communicate on, on baseball now that the, the draft and all that have unfolded. We've already started some of those some of those talks. Um, so I'm excited to continue that. Uh, we've worked him at a, at a variety of different positions this summer just to try to get him acclimated more within the offense. And as we once we finally get on the field with him and we get pads on and we get a chance to work and see you know what he's really like there and where our other strengths and weaknesses are, we'll get him slotted. Lincoln. Everybody's been talking, uh, talking about the disturbing allegations at Northwestern about hazing. And the NCAA says it's up to schools to police themselves. What kind of safeguards do you have in place as a program to prevent something like that from happening at USC? Yeah, listen, it's a, I know it's a hot topic and certainly understand and, and respect the question. Um, it's something that all of us have had to deal with uh, in terms of having procedures and processes and, and safeguards, as you said, in your program in place to try to do the best you can to prevent things like that happening. It's obviously at the forefront uh, of everybody's minds right now because of what happened. I don't know that I want to get into a lot of details, but I would just say we're uh, confident in the approach and it's uh, it's a it's been a constant topic for us um, since the day we walked in the door not just because there was an incident that happened at another school Let's do one more. same kind of first impression questions with bear on the defensive side and, and emmanuel come in on, on offense what have you seen kind of from them really i know no pads or anything like that. yeah um i mean you love you love what you see in the weight room you love just kind of strength and mass that they bring on, on both sides and that was that was an area for us of, uh, that we wanted to address was really on both sides. We wanted to get a little thicker, right, a little stronger, have a little more mass, a little bit more power on the interior of the offensive and defensive lines. And, and those guys bring that. So, uh, yeah, I think up to this point, excited about the off-seasons they've had. We've got to get them acclimated to us uh, from a culture standpoint, from a scheme standpoint, quickly here when fall camp starts. But they both... They both look like look, look uh, as advertised. Thank you, Coach Riley.